Actually, better for them if people don't turn on their video because it can overwhelm their connection. No. Even show your face. Hi, welcome everyone. If you're joining us by Zoom today, I'll ask you to mute your microphones, please, until the end, and I will try and watch the chat in case you have any questions during it that we can answer. Thank you. Okay. And if you're joining us by Zoom, we will we will start shortly. We still have a few people filtering in from the service upstairs. <laughs> Get in, but I see they're in now. So, okay. well, it looks like we're in. Sorry about that. Okay. Great. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to those joining us on Zoom as well. I, um, if you have your speaker on at home, if I or microphone on at home, if I can ask you to mute it, please. 
I'll be watching the chat so you can type in any questions you have on it. Otherwise, we'd like to get started today. Welcome to the third Sunday Forum. My name is Carrie Oxy, and I'd like to introduce our speakers today. We have Erica Klein from Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota and Sarah Lissy from Zumbro Lutheran Church. They're here today to talk about their partnership um, to work with youth experiencing homelessness. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us this morning. Um, as Carrie mentioned, I'm the director of mission over at Sandro uh, Church. And kind of over the course of the pandemic, we have the privilege of developing this partnership with LSS. Um, and I'm delighted to be here today to introduce you to the report that I am seeing for all of you. So for the pre-pandemic, how we got here, um, the social services has been kind of a long-term mission partner of ours. And as we began to embark on our renovation project, um, we started to think about how we can um, put aside some of the money raised specifically for mission and go deeper into our relationship with our mission partners. Um, we took some time to discern uh, where a need was and discovered that here in Rochester, there really are great supports for young people who are at risk of or experiencing homelessness. And homelessness in that population looks very different than it does in older populations. Um, and so we worked with LSS and I kind of traveled around to Mankato and Minneapolis and looked at some other programs and some other opportunities and we talked about what might work in our facility. So as a part of the we were able to renovate um, one of the rooms in that space. So they renovated our youth room into a room specifically for LSS. Um, and we added Boxes for staff there and upgraded the kitchen space. So they have a, a full kitchen um, for cooking and serving meals. Our space has been out mostly in the facility and we support the um, facility, um, preaching and supporting the staff uh, and the youth that come. And my job specifically is trying to engage our people in the community at large to engage with the resource center and share their time with um, the youth that are there. Program itself is specifically run by LSS, some of the things that they offer. So I'm going to hand it over to Erica and let her see what happens with this. Thanks, Sarah. Again, I'm Erica Klein. I'm the, uh, oh, wow, wow. Robert. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm the program manager um, for Lutheran Social Services, and um, I oversee our resource center, street outreach, um, those type of programs. <clears throat> getting into the resource center at large, what we're, um, what our hope is and desire is, is that we're a seed in a crack of the community where we can offer support and hope. Um, homelessness looks a lot different than the typical um, generic idea of what you think in Hollywood, where you're seeing a lot of uh, camps and tents and people on um, church steps and things like that, especially with at-risk youth. Um, at-risk youth, uh, homelessness can look like couch hopping. Um, it can look like um, having a job for a couple hours but nowhere to go after that, so they're at the landing or at the bus station. Um, there aren't a lot of resources in Rochester, so we're hoping to really expand. Um, I actually came, this is a little bit about me, I came from uh, the Twin Cities, a lot more resources up there. So when I moved down here, I could see the need. Um, the resource center being open now, it's um, a little bit of a slower start. So how it's being fulfilled currently is current clients. We're having our current clients come to the resource center and uh, by word of mouth. Right now, uh, we have a resource center open from Mondays three to six and Thursdays, one to six. Um, we are hoping to increase those hours this year, um, but we're also in need of some, some supports and some help as well. Um, as far as who we're targeting, when I say at-risk youth, we're talking between 16 to 24. So this is the age group that we're primarily working with. Uh, <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay. Okay. So 
at the resource center, what we're doing is encouraging uh, some independence. So um, we do offer ILS independent living skills classes. Um, we offer um, time to come and decompress. We have uh, a computer there. So if people want to get online and apply for services, or not services, but uh, maybe uh, financial benefits, uh, food support, uh, look for jobs, things like that. Um, we also have a pantry. We do cook. Uh, Zumbro, when they redid this kitchen, it's like a teaching kitchen. It's so beautiful. We do cook and um, try to have a lot of youth participate in that as well. So we're just getting started with this. Um, I don't have an idea as far as how many homeless youth are currently in the Olmstead uh, County area. We do have a pit town coming up, uh, so I don't have those, those numbers for you guys, uh, but it is quite large. And yes. do you work with the school district? And I know they have yes. the homeless um, social work. Mm -hmm. And you work, you work with them? Yes. Okay. So we do have, so certain, we have um, pro, uh, different grants. So um, a lot of times with the school, the schools, uh, we have a grant that works with that. It's called BC. And those are going to be um, your minors. So still in school, um, maybe um, parents don't have the resources to care for them. Maybe they ran away. Maybe parents don't want them back. And they're couch hopping, staying with friends or who have you. So we do connect with schools um, and other resources. In the um, well, question for that if you're that uh, we're not or who are culture, what do we have to do to offer them uh, for like to stay or so LSS here in Rochester, we don't have actual help. What we um do help with is uh, something called coordinated entry, and uh, what that is is a database. And so uh, we take information that is uh, private in this database um, to where you can get pulled uh, from different resources. So for example, there is a apartment called Gagey's sure. and they can house there. Um, we also help trying to find housing, maybe private um, landlords that has a room for rent and we have a 19 year old that has no uh, using credit or uh, maybe no credit at all. And so we'll, we'll help find um, other resources in the community. At times we can help financially um, with deposits and um, first month's rent, uh, depending on the grant. Um, we're also um, looking into expand like cold funds. That's a big big for Rochester. Expand what? Post homes. Post. Oh, oh. Yes, sorry. Post homes. So looking to hopefully expand that as well. Um, so why I'm here is we're looking for volunteers. This resource center, as I said, is I know that it's going to be a little success. Um, there's a lot of people in the community that want to help with the film of how or how to get started. Volunteering is a great way to do that. And what that would look like, for example, is by volunteering on a day, a Monday, for example, it's three to six, come in, maybe you have an activity. Maybe you're a person that loves to knit and can, you know, maybe hold class or come in and uh, cook that evening. Um, you know, whatever needs <clears throat> that we're looking for at the time. Excuse me. Yes. Um, how many of the youth who come to the center are LGBTQ, and are there services for those people, maybe related to the um, program and the clinic, giving them services to help with their kids? LSS. 
is an open door to any and everybody. So we work with every demographic in every demographic. Um, there's nobody that is ruled out. Um, as far as you mean like specific services, if somebody wanted to work at me. No, I think you're referring to the Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> we won't pay for that, but <laughs> okay. no, but I mean, do you have, do you make referrals? Do you have resources that you can put in shelter and use? Um, refer them to those services. Okay, so we do have case managers. Okay. These case managers are, are there to. Um, help support and guide along the way, right? And so if we have, for example, if we had a client that um, was born male that wanted to transition, we would help research and try to find those resources. Um, if there was something at Mayo, we could um, help participate with going to appointments with them, transportation, um, helping with maybe or suggest even suggesting, uh, you know, doing therapy um, first or counseling. I don't know if that's a criteria before you do any kind of surgical thing. Um, I would assume counseling first, uh, but I'm not positive. But that's the point of resource center is we can have one hot spot where we know multiple resources in the community and know um, where to help guide are at risk you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I thought you were, I'm sorry. Oh, I, just a follow up. Um, so is each unit that comes to the center assigned a new burner? Correct. Okay. Yes. So um, currently we have four case managers uh, serving the Rochester area. Um, we are um, looking to, for a street outreach worker full time, and then also another um, full time case manager. We also our street outreach worker when we do hire, they will be out in the community. They will be going to the libraries. They'll be going to schools. They'll be going to um, little uh, restaurants and dives and um, parks and bridges and. Uh, the bus station, um, airports, airports are open 24. You might not be able to go through the gate, but you can certainly sit outside and go inside to be warm. Um, so a street outreach person um, will actually be out in the community offering resources, telling them who we are. Um, most 90% of the time we have people calling into us. Um, looking for help, or we're getting calls from the school or the county social workers and things like that. Yes, I have a question online. What are the reporting requirements when working with 16 or 17 year olds and is child protection notified? Depends. We're all mandated reporters. And so if there is a situation of um, potential or suspected of any kind of abuse, um, things of that nature, we are required to uh, report that. Um, as far as 16 or 17 year olds, um, most of the time we're um, hearing from them with schools. So if they are currently in school, so we can meet with the school counselor and that youth. Um, if there's no reason to call child protection, no. Um, oftentimes, maybe the uh, youth has been kicked out. And so parent doesn't want anything to do with them, or um, there was a fight, or it was a runaway, you know, things of that nature. So we don't primarily just talk to a 16 year old and immediately talk to police. Oh, yes, sir. You suggested if someone could come in and cook. How do you find out what your kitchen looks like? How do I turn down about what they might like to eat? How many people might be there? Uh, well, speak to that for a minute. Yeah, sure. So never know how many people are going to be there on any given day. You know, you walk in at 2 30 and it could be snowing and you're expecting one person to show up or maybe zero and then all of a sudden there's 10. Um, so there's no appointment to be said. It's 
you know, you can just come. Our um, hours are open to everybody. You, you bring the groceries. Yes. Are there plates there? Oh yes. Yeah. Silverware. Yes, sir. Why do you come to find out what's there or know what's there? No, sir. So, um, this I just want to know what's there. We do have a full kitchen, so we do have um, all of the necessities we cook. Um, we also do have food, um, so we do have a pantry. So, um, and so normally, what we would typically do is the night that we're cooking, um, we we go out for the case manager and get the ingredients to cook whatever we want that night. So, for example, last Thursday, I experimented with something called egg roll. I believe it's called. Never did it before. Huh. Um, did that? It was interesting. Um, but. We try to have an idea of what we're going to cook each evening. Um, as far as what we like, they're, they're young people. Right? If they're hungry, they eat. Um, I would just be happy to share our experience. One of the, one of the fortunate things that um, our youth minister, Jen Brother, and I, is we were able to take different classes or have independent living Have a meal that's planned and simple. Um, uh, chicken fajita meal, something that you can make for an unknown, you know, to like assemble. And um, it was interesting. I think we had the term classic in our head, but you know, like you said, you don't want to come up and it's more like a family cooking experience to be able to hang out, chill, get to know them, listen to their story, encourage them to participate. You know, I had one youth who was excellent at shopping. She did all the prepping and maybe, and we had another youth, you know, I'm Designing them with the rice cooking and it was just kind of like hanging out with your, your kids at home and again you know, giving them that experience and that encouragement. Very new with that. Um, and it was, it was super fun. And I, once I learned to like take my expectations from oh, we're going to cook something, fun. Uh, we're just going to hang out and just be able to like all the that experience. Yeah. So, we provided all the grocery gifts, um, and it's it was fun. Something quick, budget friendly, relatively easy to learn how to do. And then, you know, you can increase or decrease as you need. So you need to. Well, one of the things, just to expand on that real quick, is um, you know, if you come in, keep in mind that some of these young people have had this extreme trauma in their life and um what they're looking for are real people not coming in with high expectations or no expectations but coming in just viewing them as normal and human beings and being able to hold conversations where they feel that as well it's that community connect where there's a lot of success stories if you come in um, not you in particular, but if a person comes in, especially an adult that wants to be a trusted adult in a young person's life where their brain hasn't even fully developed yet, and trying to tell that person what's good for them, what they need to do in their life, and how to do it, um, it's not going to go over very well. Um, they're not going to respond to that um, because maybe they've already they've been cooking for themselves since they were six years old. Maybe they were left alone for you know multiple nights, um, and mom was out. Um, so you never know what background a person is coming from. So when we talk about like community connect, it's coming as you are and accepting as they are, and just having normal conversations and not um, try to probe too much into their past because they're trying to move forward. Um, Two hands went up. Yeah, the question I want to follow up on Monday. So we're open from three to six. Is that is that correctly? Mondays three to six, and Thursdays from one to six. Okay. And what about on weekends? No weekends. Is that when that there's a critical need? There's a critical need every single day. I mean, right, but it's even more critical on the weekends because we're not. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the I mean, yes and no. Um, oftentimes, you might have if there is a young person that is going to school, and they might be um, uh, they're leaving at school, they're meeting in their house, or they're warm, or whatever have you. 
Um, there are a couple of resources in the community as far as um, the landing forms and things like that. Um, but because we don't have housing, we encourage um, shelters as well. So. Yes, ma'am. So, um, we coordinated all the like, uh, uh, building. That's who we are. That's who we are. Oh, um, well, Lutheran Social Services, when we had the link, we're not really, I mean, people are still using that because most people, I guess, in the Rochester um, community know Lutheran Social Services as the link. Um, but LSS as a whole is obviously a part of that. And there's many, 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 many facets of Lutheran Social Services. Um, I can only really speak about Resource Center and um, at Rescue and Homeless Youth, because that's where I, I thought the link was specifically for you. It is. Okay. It is. But we're also just kind of using Lutheran Social Service or LSS. Um, but again, most people know this. It's renamed. The link is just LSS, Minnesota Youth Services. Yes. Rochester. So they just remain like put the same thing comment in the place of like correct. Correct. Yeah. Did you say we only open Monday and Thursday? Is that correct? Right now, yes. Okay. So um again, Monday 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Thursdays 1 to 6. We do plan to expand those hours. Um Fridays we wouldn't be open. Um bigger picture is Monday through Thursday being open. So two of the days during the week would be three to six and two would be one to six. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you walk us through like three o'clock on a Monday, a youth shows up, let's say who's LGBTQIA, who came out of their parents mm -hmm. the night before and they were or the morning before and they're now being out of their house. Um, just what happens at that point? Like they get a case manager assigned, they get a case created, and then what happens at 6 p.m.? when your center closes. Um, well, before you answer, we're, we've, we're, it's broken up when it's not a microphone. So can I just repeat the question if that's oh, okay? Yes. So sorry. everyone at home can hear, sorry. Um, that the, the question was, what happens when someone who is identified as LGBTQIA has been kicked out of the house and goes and, and um, finds resources at the center? What would happen at 6 p.m. when it closes? Well. Case managers, we would do everything that we can. We have certain things that we try to do um, as far as getting to know who an individual has as a support um, in their life. So it might not be mom and dad, dad, but they might have an aunt, a responsible aunt in the, sorry, in the city. Um, so if, if the only issue for that person to be housed that night is transportation with the distance, it, then we would help get that person to the city. We want to know when a, when a person comes in is who are their supports? Immediate, mom, dad, step parents. Um, outside of that, we kind of go to schools, grandparents, cousins, aunts, things like that, and then okay. friends. And so if there was a possibility, say, um, for example, I'll give, uh, I won't give any names just for privacy, but there is a, a just turned 17 year old um, who is being housed by a community member at, that works at a school. And they are absolutely willing to help house them until they're 18. And so what we would do is, wow, that is amazing because a lot of people might not be able to do that. So what can we do to help you during that process? We can help um, with groceries. You know, that's an extra mouth to feed. Um, so that might lighten the load, um, help with the um, cell phone bill um, of the youth where that person isn't feeling that financial burden, mm -hmm. um, things like that. I can tell you, it's very far in between where you're going to have somebody that has absolutely nowhere, nowhere to go. Okay. Um, oftentimes, though, it is going to have to be like a landing or we're calling one of the other resources in the community as far as shelters. Um, when it is nice out, I will tell you this, 
Um, we do have a um, um, harm reduction approach. And so if somebody is homeless, it's, you know, it's the summertime and they do not have anywhere to go and uh, the uh, shelters are full, then we can supply tents um, or if they are staying in their car, then blankets or, you know, things like that. Um, and that does happen. And is there, do you have land available that's yours that you can, that they can freely put their tent on without being at risk from the authorities? No, no okay. land. Um, there really hasn't been an issue with that. Okay. Um, you're going to see that more in the city because okay. there you are going to see your encampments. Um, what you guys aren't seeing out here or what people in Rochester aren't seeing out here is when you go to these parks, you go back into the woods and that's where you're going to see a lot of encampments. Um, you have to remember too, a lot of these youth are very resourceful. And so there are potentially gonna be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds that have been homeless and do not wanna be housed. Um, so there's that too. So how do we make sure that they're safe? How do we make sure they at least have their necessities? Um, so it's all, you know, and this is actually a volunteer service for them, right? So we can't push anything, but it's okay, you're coming to us. We don't want to be housed um, at this place. You'd rather stay in your car. Well, what can we do to make that comfortable for you? Thank you. I'm a systems engineer, so I'm really, really curious what, yeah. like what physically happens when people are past the door. So thank you. And again, need for host homes, you know. Yes, ma'am. That's actually a great question. How do you do we are going to get to that when we do our volunteer training. <laughs> we have a we had a question on how do you get to be a house host we'll home. Um, we're, we'll go more into detail with that um, for those interested in volunteering. Um, do our volunteer um, training, um, but we do have. I don't know if you can hear me back there. We okay. Um, you uh, as far I'll just give you a little snippet. There is. Um, there will be discussion on how to become licensed through LSS to be a host home. So all that good information will be there. And do you, do you license both homes for uh, under 18 as well as above 18? Correct. So under 18, I mean, in host homes, it's it's typically short, right? 21 days. Um, and the county isn't involved in that 21 days, right? So, you define yeah. postpone, you know, in terms of what, what that means to, to you? Postpone is uh, people that are, that have space in their uh, their homes, their apartment, their house, um, an extra room or a basement that temporarily a at-risk person can stay. And we would work with them. This is like, when I say temporary, this is really, this is kind of an emergency situation. There's nowhere for the 17 year old to go or the 16 year old to go. Um, and we try to do what we can within those 21 days. Um, and there's training for that too. And it's pretty extensive. That's why I didn't really want to get into it uh, today. Um, there's a follow-up question online. Um, are law enforcement permitted on site if looking for a youth? Fantastic, fantastic question. Um, <laughs> is there a search warrant, right? Is there a search warrant uh, legally looking for this person? Um, sometimes you have to use discernment. Um, we do have a policy in place where they have privacy. You come in and you're just asking for a person and hey, which where's this person? Technically, I don't have it, right. Um, I would use personal discernment and discretion if there were a say uh, arsonist or murderer, you know. Um, but somebody coming in. A, a police officer just coming in looking for somebody that may or may not have stolen something or may or may not had um, a pipe or whatever the case may be. Um, they have their privacy and if there's no search warrants, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the difference between those who 
ice to the lake, and I mean, those who have cars, which is the difference between those who are still in school and those who are most high school. The question is, can you speak to the difference between those who are still in school and those who are post high school? Believe it or not, there's um, high school students that um, may not be living under the parents' roof that far. Um, I had a client that mom was moving out of state, didn't want to bring her daughter and left the car there for her. And that's where she slept until uh, reaching out. Um, so there are high, high school students that have cars. How they get them, I don't know. Um, oftentimes we don't those type of questions, but except for, do you have your license? Is it insured? If it's not, then we can't help with that part. It's not legal. Basically encouraging uh, driving without license insurance. So, does that answer your question? No, okay. <laughs> Specifically, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you much what the difference is between a, a youth that's in school and that car is. Not just those in, in a, you know, whether or not. There are many who will not have. Um, I'm assuming this is what a difference probably to react with the students who are in school and those who are post high school. Okay, what is that difference? Well, we're there's different things that we um, are like responsible for if if the youth is a minor. Um, if the youth has a family member that lives out of state, we can't just send that person out of state, right? They're a minor, twenty one year old. Of course, we can't do a great on bus to Arizona, so you can stay with an aunt, and we're going to do that. Um, there's a lot of a lot of things that we have to take into consideration when we're dealing with uh, kids that are still in school and minors. Um, and there's liability for us. So. Um, I imagine the kind of situation. It does, de it does depend on the situation. Um, I, I don't have an answer for you because there's the possibilities are always different. Um, there's not one, one client situation is never the same. Um, it's not similar to another person. Um, so we're typically working hard, case managers will work hard to figure out who that support system is for that minor and figure out where they can temporarily go or if there is a family member or friend that they can see. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of all of the barriers that an invisible minor might face without an address, you couldn't get a state ID, without a picture ID, you can't get a job, without parental consent, how do you get health care? Say mom was on Medicaid, are you still on Medicaid? Do you, how do you help people like that? How do you help them become visible to them? Well, um, can well, I, sorry, the question is, how do you be, how do you help people become visible again if they're invisible, specifically through legalities? Like if you don't have permission or you're too young, you don't have a photo ID, and how do you how do you navigate the system when someone is younger than eighteen? Again, I think it's going to go back to our case managers. Um, if we can help get IDs. We just have to figure out where first and forget and social security uh, numbers are, right? So parents have those, but not willing to give them up where we, we are, might talk to county. Um, we have programs that are based on prevention. We have victim services. There's always ways to get around things. It takes time. Um, but again, we need to know what the supports are, right? Uh, schools offer school IDs. Um, so that's helpful. Uh, at, 16, 17, the goal might be, I want to have my driver's license and we can work on trying to get those things, um, getting jobs or part-time jobs, but primarily for those where their goals are, I want to finish high school. Well, let's make sure that we're getting you there. Do you have a computer? Um, do you have a stable place to live? Do you have Wi-Fi where you're at so you can do your homework? Okay, you don't want to go to school, let's try um, a different educational approach where you can do it online. Um, it's about 
working with them and figuring out a way where we can help get them successful, get them to where they're at least 18, and then we can um, add in those extra independent living skill classes and uh, things, you know, things like that. So, yes, ma'am. Do you, do they have, can they use your address? Yes. And, and phone numbers, they don't have We, we, there are government phones, free phones. Um, as part of a resource, but oftentimes we're we will buy a phone and uh, help with that. So, so you you can't use like the Zumbro Lutheran phone number or address as needed. We have another right. office. Um, our, our resource center is at Zumbro. We do have our business office, so um, we there are times that we've had we have mail come from there, and oftentimes we're working with the house. So there, there's going to be special situations too, right? Yes. Is there any need for volunteers who could tutor in subjects for the school age children? Is the the question is is there a need for tutors who can tutor students in subject areas? I think that there absolutely would be a need. Um, that's something that can certainly be discussed. You know, coming in on a, a night that we're open and um, if you help teach math, then we could uh, potentially market that part. Like, hey, on this day, so and so is coming. We have volunteers coming in to help tutor. Do you need help with math? Do you need help with reading? Things like that, and encourage people to come in. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a need for activities for these young people um, outside of? Studies or that person, you have a need for, for example, our therapist to come in and just say, let's let's um let's just do a painting of where we where we would love to be. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're very creative when it comes to that. That's the fun part, right? Uh, that's where I really want to get, you know, type this up is the fun part of volunteering and doing things with them um, and making them feel visible. So making them feel visible, yes, having an ID um, and a birth certificate and things like that so they can work is as adults and that who have already gone through life know that that's what you need. But for them, it's not a necessity. That isn't why, you know, someone might not feel visible is there's no human connection. We're not doing anything together. So yes, as far as activities and art is a big thing there. Um, I do a lot of art with them. Um, I'm not a licensed art therapist, but I have um, taken many courses and it is certified. <clears throat> um, so that's huge. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I need to record it. So yeah, activities, that's a huge thing. You know, coming in, cooking, and um, uh, being creative, uh, having poetry night. Boys might not like poetry night, so rap night, you know, <laughs> which rap is poetry. Um, tie dye, uh, movies, um, talking about things, reading, um, helping resume, resume building, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. What about um, you with the impact mental health issue? Mm -hmm. uh, we, yes, and we do work with um, youth that have mental health issues, um, but we are also in the position to reach out to county um, if it's more than what we're able to uh, help with, right? So resourcing out, we'll still work with them, but okay, there's a mental health need here. And so let's try to get this person set up with X, Y, and Z. So NCD with mental health issues, because you talked about a lot of these new topics and experience. Oh, yes, ma'am. So I would think that also, if there are medications or something that they consistently stay on the medications or you know, that sort of thing. Uh, some do, some don't. Um, we can't, we don't know, you know, we don't know what did or what a person chooses to do at night. Um, oftentimes, it's, it's a lot of encouragement to stay on meds. Um, if that's what was prescribed to them. Many times they will have um, other uh, workers in the community, so they might have a mental health worker 
um, or even a social worker. Um, so we're partnering with other community members. So Lutheran Social Service, the resource center is a small team. You know, we we are basically like a connector, a cell, connecting to other things, other resources. Um, unfortunately, we're not the end all be all when it comes to ending homelessness, but yes, I'm sorry. So I assume you can't work with the family. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. We have um we have housing navigators. There are housing navigators. Um, there's um, a navigator for uh, uh, medical, right? Somebody needs MA or medical assistance, something like that. Who's over here? Yeah, or anything. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be great to work on helping students to yeah. how to be in their patients' patients. <laughs> right. So, like the, um, the healthcare navigator. So, we can help get them set up um, with. Med medical assistance. Mm -hmm. Medical assistance will pay for that. They need a ride. We have Uber cards. We have bus cards. We often transport. So, yes, yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll do it. Besides words, word of mouth, how are you hearing about this opportunity? Social media platforms. So, we do have um, Lutheran Social Services, we have our own uh, Facebook. Um, and this year we are starting to have one, uh, two particular people um, post on there. Um, young people obviously are all over social media. We don't have all of them, but Facebook is a good avenue for us. Um, and again, when I was speaking earlier about our uh, street outreach worker, when we do hire for that, that person will be out in the community going to different businesses and um, residences and things like that to um, share this information. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question was, uh, well, if you would have any need for someone to uh, share, it's kind of like some mixed rehab counseling information and mixed engineering information, which is from my field, for instance, all these children are experiencing trauma, but is there any general class being conducted with kids about what trauma does to the brain and how it rewires the brain so that they know that what they're experiencing personally is an absolute rational human adaptive response to an environmental stimuli as opposed to something that's wrong with them or something that they're being stigmatized about. Because I feel like our culture is super in love with, I don't know, kind of attacking anyone who's down and mm -hmm. hitting them really hard, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And I just don't want anyone there hearing, obviously you there, if possible, Hearing an idea in their head that there was something specifically wrong with them, as opposed to they actually had a really, really healthy response and not the one where they were going to sleep mm -hmm. for a month. And that's where we have our um, like pers person centered approach with people. Okay. Um, there, our case managers are extremely well versed okay. in um, understanding that a typical reaction or behavioral reaction might look different um, maybe for somebody that hasn't been tra uh, traumatized in some sort of way or had some sort of traumatic event happen in their life so um we have we have a lot of trainings to how to combat certain things but we're not psychologists mm -hmm. um there's a lot of things that we're not obviously diagnosing right um we're not going to encourage hey you need to be put on meds that's not right this right. Case, right so um we don't have any classes per se okay um would that anything be open to could like, be if that, that like i'd love to come in and say hey just generally fyi mm -hmm. this is what trauma does to the brain i'd love to share the, the drug education that i'm giving an eight-year-old about how drugs hijack the limbic brain and cut off your ability to experience joy from any other source that I learned when we have counseling classes. I'm not a professor in those areas, nor am I a doctor, so it wouldn't be a matter of, oh, this is what you're experiencing. But right. I feel like I feel like people might approach drugs differently if they knew what's really going on. Well, I can tell you young people um, oftentimes don't realize that you uh, that there's a real thing called drug-induced uh, psychosis. Yep. And what that looks like is scary, um, but they might not have that information and what could happen if that happens to them, right? So a lot of information out there, I think that that would be potentially something that would work really good for like an ILS class, independent living class, okay. 
um, because they will um, help teach with like budgets and how to grocery shop and your rights as a um, leasee, things like that. A lot of different things um, as far as being independent. So I, I, it's a potential. I'm just a program manager. I'm actually um, newly a program manager. So I was promoted from a case manager a few months ago. Um, so that type of um, question would be probably geared more towards our director team. Okay, I'll get with you offline because yeah. I kind of volunteer for your organization. So I'll find out later where your needs are and how I can meet them. Perfect. So we have about five minutes left. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring it around. When did this start again? It's not even been a year. No, uh, summer of last year. Summer of last year. Okay. So in the six months that you've done as capacity has, you know, two days a week, that's, that's capacity and as you're learning to grow it. So what's the biggest win you think you've had so far in six months? And then what do you wish and what are you looking for for help in the community? Our biggest win, I think, was being able to open our doors. So Super Junior Stack all the way to Zumbro um, for that. Um, another big win is um, just some of our success stories coming in in such a short amount of time, um, being able to find that um, long lost uh, family member that is willing to take somebody in or um, setting something up with a family friend that can house somebody, things like that. We had a very successful Christmas party. I uh, this was very successful Christmas party. And we're talking um, people that are used to maybe not getting anything, having so much. And it's not just about gifts. It's about, again, community, knowing that there's people out there that are giving to them specifically. It was huge. It was very emotional for many of them. Um, being able to take gifts back for themselves and their children, you know. Um, some of our at-risk kids have, have children. You know, it was a lovely event. It was a great thing. There were babies to hold. There were babies to hold. There were babies to hold. And it's been fun to see them have community and being able to be together. Um, and have a place to celebrate that. And, and I know can't the first time the pandemic that you're able to get everybody to move together the previous years, they we had done like a drive through the yeah. thing. So and that was a big, a big deal this year. It was fun for us at Zumbo to see people coming into the building and um well Thanksgiving too. And that was we posted our first Thanksgiving meal um in the research center and that was Volunteers drop off the gift sides and let us up with the turkey and the youth came in. They got to come out and have community. Their kids. Um, I think sometimes we kind of overcomplicate and, and want to solve the problem. And what I'm learning in my observations are just the value of being a community, being a whole. Human person and laughing and spending time with these people that I don't ever felt it was of an enormous value. Um, so, so just to recap. Not everyone could hear that, but that sorry that um, and thank you for the presentation. We have thank yous online too. Um, that some of the most successful things was making the connections, especially at the holidays um, and and seeing people. We actually this year um, we we were able to communicate or uh, connect with a community partner that was able to donate. Uh, it was maybe 150 Bumba socks and winter boots. So that was just a new um, connection for us. Um, where I would like to see it go is obviously our hours expand. Mm -hmm. um, and for uh, word of mouth to spread um, so people know that we are there, we are open, um, and it's a place to come. You, I mean, a person might already, we work with people um, that are still housed, that we've already gotten housed, but that still need um, supports. So it's not just, hey, let's get you housed and then we'll talk to you if it doesn't work out, right? 
So pe can people after this presentation talk to you about volunteer opportunities? And do you have like online through Zumba Lutheran or Lutheran Social Services ways to connect and sign up to help? We have a volunteer training schedule for Monday, February 30, 6 to 30. We'll begin the research and start on Monday, go to the Zumba and the registration link for that. So then we're offline. So that would be on the Lutheran Social Services site as well as the Zumber site, or maybe on the LSS Facebook. On the LSS Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It might be a good idea if you could. Uh, Give a written account of that opportunity and give it to our office so that it can be put in our bulletin or in our newsletter. Yeah, I would love to get our summer. Something we look forward to is engaging the community and um, defining churches in a variety of ways to support the resources that we can um, and make those share, share our resources and those connections. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, I don't I don't know if your program is aware, but we have a thrift shop here in the near community clothing. We also offer a Saturday meal, and there's no need to limit on that, so they're welcome to come for a free lunch at noon. If they come before noon, there's a like a little snack before, but they can you're certainly welcome to play for the Saturday evenings. Since you don't offer a weekend program. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, that wasn't in our. Um, we also have scholarships for our child care. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. this is good thing. We also need workers. That's a gap. And they do offer education to become a child care worker. So our board of children will supply finances for you to become educated in child early childhood. Oh, let's connect on that. Um, so a, so what about um, I would say contact our director, Tanya, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the information. Yeah, okay. I'll like, get booking for people to start out oh, at any start out at A. And then they, we have a county board that said we would pay for their education, but you know, staying with us. And we've had about three of them now that have gone up in their classification from A to the next level as a tri shelter. That's wonderful. Wow. So that would be a great right. opportunity for both yeah. organizations to fulfill their needs. Well, <laughs> and the Saturday room scenery is also definitely here to fellowship. The fellowship together. Sure. Yes. So it's not just you know being you know, I don't know for sure, but I think they're still sitting around the tables, right? Family style. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like you come in and like a cafeteria or something. And so it fosters yeah community. It is a heated meal, and I'm very, very, very big on that. Um, it's it's not a rule that I have, but if I'm there, um, I really want. Our young people to not be on their phones. I want them to engage inside that family style. So I'm very big on that. Like, we're not going to have phones at the table while we're eating. We're going to, you know, talk and, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, is there a point where you can get in touch with us and we can give you a link? How low, how young can you be? For 18 and yeah. Initial training is for 18 and older for the for volunteering it. Oh, up to 101. Oh, that was a joke. I don't know. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> Volunteer training on the six. Mm -hmm. A lot of your questions will be answered. And I know that um a lot of you guys really want to know about the homeless population and um, mm -hmm. 
maybe how to solve it with the email and things like that. I didn't have enough time to really go into a lot of it, but much, much more information will be available on February 6th if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then one click, we have a table at the back. Thank you for joining us today online. We'll have the recording available later and I'll get a hold of the PowerPoint presentation we're unable to show today and make it available to us well. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Bye.